Hello, New Delhi. Hello from Switzerland. Good evening. The beginning of a talk is always the hardest part for me. How do you start a talk? Do you tell a joke or do you ask a critical question or, I don't know, um, a good quote? Or do you just tell a personal story? I decided to tell you why I cannot be there with you tonight. So things started out five years ago when I gave birth to my daughter. Four months later, I went back to work and I, I worked two days a week. I had a very decent job and everything was fine. Three years ago, I gave birth to my second child, my son, and this is um, where things have changed. I decided to quit all my jobs and all my projects. I decided that um, I didn't, did not want to go back to a job this, which was only okay. So I wanted to work um, full of joy and full of enthusiasm, knowing that um, I have a job that created an impact that um, leaves um, a better world behind for my children. And at that time, I learned about artificial intelligence and the potential impact on our society. So I wanted to co-create a world where my kids can live in peace and abundance and um, where technology serves us and our planet in all the good ways. So my career as a psychologist and I took off quite well. And I had a lot of talks um, the past months on the topic of trust. So um, the question whether we can trust AI or not. And I was so often away from my kids and my family that um, I had to say no to this wonderful opportunity to visit India. I had to set these priorities and it was hard. It was a struggle. It's always a struggle combining career and motherhood. And if you tell me different, I don't believe it. <laughs> but um, this is just a very small, tiny glimpse into the world of a mo working mom in our time, let's say in the year 2020. Would this have been a problem 100 years ago? No. 100 years ago and earlier, we did what we were supposed to do. We were taking care of the children, the household, we were cooking, we we're caring for the elderly and the sick people. And now? Now women are everywhere. Women are doctors, lawyers, astronauts. They're even in Switzerland. They're allowed to vote since 1990. Yeah, 1990? <laughs> Little joke. Women are in politics now. Um, they're in the police and women code. Women write algorithms. Women co-create what we call artificial intelligence. However, only 20 to 30% of the developers nowadays are women. And, and, and how can a representation of the, how good can a representation of the real world be if half of the world is missing. And here I also mean people of color, um, different cultures, different nationalities, and so on. So they say in Switzerland uh, that Swiss people are especially slow, thinking back to uh, the right to vote, 1990. But um, maybe this will change if we not only think, you know, about the societal value diversity brings, but also the monetary values. More and more studies now show that there's an actual monetary growth if you have more women in leadership positions. Yeah, but now, to be very honest with you, to me, this sounds like a very desperate argument um, to convince the very man-dominated field that even if you put more women into management, you will even get more money. To me, honestly, I couldn't care less. I truly believe that the return on investment comes naturally. I came to a point where, do not, where I do not want to convince people by um, speaking about diversity or gender or money or morals. I, or let's say better, women in AI Switzerland, we speak about content. We do not point fingers at the bad and evil 
white male developers. Yeah, okay, maybe sometimes we do, but that's not the point. Uh, we deliver content. We are professionals in our fields. We have different perspectives, different pers there's different expertise in the field of AI, and we want to perform. Of course, we need all these ambassadors around the globe talk about specifically AI and gender issues, motherhood and all these things. And, and, and this is what, what makes our network so special. Every one of us can contribute with his unique talents, with, it, with, with their unique gifts. And this is what we're so proud of. This is what our community is made of. We delegate the topics and we do what we're good at and what we're not good at is left to others and we trust them to do the things right and um, so this is what we, what it's about in the end it's about delegating and sharing tasks and topics now what exactly do i mean by we focus on content i want to give you some examples now this year we launched the women in ai talk in switzerland so this is our signature talk and we talked about we focused on digital assistance and hype versus reality we were looking at practical and research examples on um, the topics of natural language processing and understanding. We talked about business cases and how can we use these voice assistants. And in the end, we also um, talked about the responsible use of it. We had women and men in our lineup and we had women and men in our audience. So, um, this is also a very important part of our philosophy. We're not a women's only club. We are truly inclusive and this is our goal. Um, next to our white talk, we also have informal events, which um, will we launch our first white time an informal gathering in Zurich with Gisbel, our Zurich lead this year. Um, our next big talk will be in February about the dark side of AI, where we'll talk about deep fakes, about um, autonomous weapon systems, so-called killer robots, and of course we'll talk about the consequential legal and ethical issues that come along. How can we deal with all these ambiguous dual-use technologies as a society on all kinds of different levels? These are tough topics but we're not afraid to tackle them. Now, these events are rather um, tailored for adults and experts, but we also have, and this is what I'm specifically proud of, the Y Camps for Children. Jovaria, our educational lead, is organizing the first camp in Lausanne at the EPFL at the university, where we will gather 20 young girls around the class where we will create a robot where we will train the robot to go a different route how it will manage a different route a specialty in this camp is that we'll have different mentors showing the kids the teenagers different paths in ai it's not only about coding there are all different paths from business to research uh, to uh, a psychologist working with ai and we want to show them that it's fun, that this is not a men's field. This is, can be everybody's field. Last but not least, we also have open door events where we go into big tech companies or smaller companies showcasing their everyday work. And the idea is to make meaningful connections and ideas of how could this all look like. Now we're in the midst of growing this uh, community here and for us it's really important that we collaborate with all the other great networks that are out there. I don't believe in this nonprofit competition. This is not my thing. I want a world where we can create better stories together. Not his story, not her story, our stories. Stories that are not made for books and archives. We want to make them visible. This is the only way that we can create role models that are known for, for expertise, for our visions, for our th authenticity and our vulnerability. The dreams we have for our children. We want to be known for the courage to step out of our comfort zone and break traditional patterns. We don't want to change the system. 
we are changing ourselves and our beliefs and we believe that the system will change automatically. We are in charge. We are taking action. We are not smashing the patriarchy. We lead through values, the feminine values, such as collaboration, compassion and tolerance. And, and, and this femininity has nothing to do with sex. This is, feminism is a concept. And it means nothing more than social, political, and economic equality of all sexes. So things are becoming remarkably awesome here in Switzerland. I truly believe that in general, now is the best time for women to have a career in tech. I'm incredibly lucky. I have, uh, my company supports me with everything a working mom needs um, to perform. But also others like, for example, the university EPFL in Lausanne, they set gender balance as one of their highest priority at their AI conferences, for example. Realistically speaking, of course, this is not everywhere the case. Uh, the case. Worldwide, we are far from being, the work is far from being done. Um, take a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote, men may work from sun to sun, but a women's work is never done. But here's a valuable truth I want to share with you. I hope my work for the ambassador role for women in AI will be done anytime soon. I hope that all these great networks like Women in Digital Switzerland, uh, Women in Tech, etc. I hope that they will be out of operation when my two-year-old daughter is growing adult. I want, I want our work to be done within the next 10 years so that we don't feed this nonprofit networks. So that it is absolutely natural um, that that, that my daughter will be the first woman on the moon, uh, Mars, or whatsoever. And it's normal. But these days are not now. Now is the time to make history. And not only as the voices of Siri and Alexa, but as leaders, as change makers, as peacemakers, revolutionaries, or Nobel Prize winners. So on behalf of Women in AI Worldwide, my name is Marisa Chop from Women in AI Switzerland, and I invite you to join our network. It's a call to courage across borders, everywhere, for everyone. Thank you, India. Thank you, all participants and organizers for this great opportunity. This is a way to start discourse and awareness, but more importantly, we have to act upon our, upon our ideas and talks. We must come up with feasible steps to take now, follow up on our tasks and be accountable. We have to get going and I will help wherever I can. Greetings from Switzerland. Thank you and let's do this.